Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Dennis Brown and I want to welcome you to my weekly Freight Broker Bootcamp live every Monday at noon. For those of you that are catching this on replay, hit me up in the hash, uh, in the chat box or in the whatever, the comments below with hashtag replay. Today, just to give you a sense, we're going to talk about how to get more shippers by making less phone calls. Now, I know that might seem a little contrarian might seem a little bit unbelievable, but I'm going to explain to you exactly how top freight brokers and freight agents get more shippers, more clients, and grow their business faster by making less phone calls. So I'm going to dive into that. But before I dive into that, I just want to welcome everybody. Make sure that the tech's going well. Uh, everybody can hear me, see me. Uh, if you can't, give me a shout out here in the comments. Let me know. Uh, and also, Hit me up in the comments with the city and state that you're logging in from. A bunch of people that have that join me every week have already beat you to the punch. I'm going to give you a few shout outs, and uh, and then we're gonna and then I'm going to do uh, give you the ability. I'm going to give away a cool prize to one person who's live here today. Okay, and then I'm also going to do a live Q and A at the end. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna talk about that topic: how to get more shippers by making less phone calls. I'm also going to give some shout outs. I'm going to give away a cool prize and I'm also going to do live Q and a all of that today. So if you stick around to the end, hopefully we'll be able to answer your questions, whether it be about this topic or anything freight broker or freight agent related, particularly as it relates to startups or growing your business. So let's give a few shout outs and see how everything's going. All right. So I think everybody can see and hear me. Paul Spates from Frisco, Texas is always here. Welcome back, Paul, Bob from Cuba, New York. Welcome Tawana from Minnesota. Welcome Vera Goodlow from Vera, Missouri. Okay. Welcome Nelson from Florida, Winter Haven, Florida. Welcome Andrea from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Love it. All right. We've already got Canada and the US. Welcome Brett from Charlotte, North Carolina. Welcome Michael from Shelby, Ohio. Ohio, I should say. Welcome Tiffany from Berlin, New Jersey. Thanks for joining me. She's excited and so am I. I think you're going to love this training. Welcome Shamika from Dallas. Welcome Jason from Olivia, Minnesota. Welcome Eduardo from Las Vegas. I was just talking about scheduling a trip out there this uh, this fall. So welcome, Eduardo. Uh, welcome Val from Santa Clarita, California. Christopher from Bakersfield, California. Chad from Fredericksburg, Texas. Uh Wisco Will from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. You can see we've got people from all over the country joining us. Not It's not uncommon to have multiple continents that are joining me. Sometimes we have South America, we've got Europe, we've got Canada, we've got all over the place. So welcome Frisco from Sacramento or uh, Priscilla Onya. I'm sorry, I read that wrong. From Sacramento. Welcome Miguel from New Jersey. Chambo from Cameron. Uh, Yasha from... Tucson, Arizona. Welcome Liz from Angleton, Texas. Man, we got people from all over. Helen from Ohio, Patrice from Atlanta. Uh, we've got uh, uh, Jocelyn from Atlanta. Ter we got people from all over the place. Thank you so much for joining me live. I truly appreciate it. But if you are catching this on replay, that's cool too. No problem. Just let me know in the, in the comments, hashtag replay. Uh, and then let me know the city and state where you're watching from. That would be great. Uh, if you're a first timer here, I think you're in for a treat. Just to give you a quick intro, my name is Dennis Brown. This is my weekly Freight Broker Bootcamp Live where I do trainings and coach and teach on how to start and grow successful freight broker or freight agency businesses. Uh, my background is an entrepreneur. I've built three multi million dollar companies in my career. The last company I built was a third party logistics company, AKA a freight brokerage. Started that company in 2003 grew it to over $80 million a year in sales. And then in 2016, I sold that company to pursue some other ventures. I also am the owner of FreightBrokerBootCamp.com, which is the on most comprehensive and cost-effective online freight broker and freight agent training program available today. So if you're a first timer or you're curious about becoming a freight broker, make sure you check that out at FreightBrokerBootCamp.com. So that's a little bit about me, but more importantly, let's talk about you guys. Uh, who wants to win a prize today? I'm not going to tell you what it is, but I will tell you, I've given away shirts like this, which is my Freightpreneur shirt. I've given away dozens of these shirts. Okay. It says Freightpreneur, someone who solves problems you don't know you have in ways you can't understand. I've given away a bunch of these. I've also given away money. 
right? I've given away cash, sometimes 50 or $100. I've also given away books, right? So I'm not gonna tell you what I'm giving away today, but I'm gonna share with you how to get it or how to possibly qualify for it because I'm gonna give one prize away today uh, after the live. But in order to qualify for the prize, here's all you have to do. Hit the like button, whether you're on YouTube or Facebook, and then share the stream. Just click the share button and then share it on Facebook, share it wherever, share it on Twitter, share it on Instagram. I don't care where you share it, but make sure you share it with your network, right? So if you share it, once you share it, come back in here, type in the comments, hashtag shared. That's all you have to do after you have shared it, right? You've got to share it first. This is an honor system. I can't go back and check everybody. Um, but ultimately hit, go out and share the stream, hit first, hit like, then share, come back in, type hashtag shared. And if you do that, you are going to be in a drawing to win a prize that I'm going to give away after the training, but right before the Q and a, now you do need to be live in order to potentially get your prize. Okay. So if you're going to just pop off in a minute and you're not going to be here when I do the actual drawing or select the winner, don't bother. I know you're busy, no harm, no foul, but you do have to be live and you have to be in the United States in order to get the prize because I can't ship these things to uh, the other side of the world. Unfortunately, the shipping cost would be way more than, than, than the cost of the, the prize itself typically. So uh, anyway, so if, you're, if you want to win a prize, if you want to qualify to potentially win a prize, all I need you to do is like this stream and then share it. And then before the Q&A, we're going to pick, I'm going to pick the winner and then we'll go into the Q and A. And that's just an extra bonus round where you guys can ask questions, whatever you're struggling with or whatever's top of mind. Okay. So today, okay. I am going to share with you how to get more shippers by making less phone calls. All right. So here's how it's going to work. Most freight brokers and freight agents start out their business in, by doing what's called cold outreach, particularly with the phone. So they're doing cold calling, right? They decide on their niche, they make a list of prospects or they search Google or they download some manufacturer database or they get access to some leads and they pick up the phone and they start smiling and dialing and they make a lot of phone calls. And what you'll find is that the phone is a very effective way to get in touch with shippers, right? It's probably the most effective way to get in touch with shippers, but it doesn't work all the time. You know, you'll call a lead, for example, say it was an XYZ manufacturing company and they made widgets. You might call that company 10, 20, 30 times and never get anybody on the phone. You're leaving voicemails or you're just trying to call back or maybe you're getting filtered out by the gatekeeper, or whatever the case may be, you're having a hard time getting through to the prospect so that you can give them your presentation, you can start developing a relationship and you can have an opportunity to get a client, right? This is the hardest part is getting the people on the phone and getting their attention, okay? So most people do that via the phone and it's a very effective way to do it, but it's not the only way and it's not the best way to get more shippers. So here's my approach, and it's very simple. Rather than limiting yourself to just the phone, I want you to consider taking what I call a multi-channel approach. So listen in carefully, okay? A multi-channel approach. So what this means is rather than just using the phone, we're gonna leverage other medium, other channels like email, social media, uh, face-to-face -face contact, and even direct mail, okay? So I just gave you four more channels that we're gonna talk a little bit about today in an effort to break through the noise, in an effort to start a dialogue with your prospect outside of just cold calling and smiling and dialing, okay? So what this does is this creates a really interesting dynamic because a lot of times if you can't get somebody on the phone and it's very difficult, they don't pick up their phone, they always go to voicemail or you're always getting screened out by a gatekeeper, these other channels are going to be very powerful for you to start a dialogue with your prospect. All right. So let's pick the first one. The first one is email. So the way you would do that, very similar to a phone, a cold call over the phone, you would do a cold email. Now, I don't have time to teach and train how to do a cold email today, 
we just don't have time. That would be an entire training on itself. Um, but cold email is where you are going to do an outreach to your prospect via email in an effort to get their attention and to start a dialogue very much like you did it over the phone. So, you know, a few tips there, obviously you want to personalize the email. You want to make sure it's very relevant and compelling. You want to keep it short and you want to have some sort of call to action, right? So, I mean, those are just a few tips on how to do it via email. So now we have, we can use the phone and we can do cold email. So now we've just added a whole nother channel and a whole nother opportunity to start a dialogue with our prospect. All right, so let's move on to social media. How do we leverage social media to, uh, to start a dialogue or to get more you know, conversations going or to convert it into an appointment? Very simply, my two for favorite forms of social media for getting shippers is LinkedIn and Twitter, okay? So LinkedIn is my number one, but it works the same way in both. So LinkedIn is the world's largest professional networking site and many shippers are on there. You can just go on there, sign up for a free account. You can search for shipping manager, logistics manager, transportation manager, and you're going to get thousands and thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of, of people that meet that criteria. And you can obviously, you know, you can obviously wean it down and filter it down into a smaller group specific to your niche. And then at that point, you can find, connect, and engage with them as a way to start a dialogue. Now, for any of you that know my story, know that LinkedIn was a very big part of our success at my brokerage. We leveraged it to generate well over $20 million a year in annual recurring revenue for my company. And so it was a very powerful channel and strategy in conjunction with the phone and in conjunction with email. So we used all three of these channels very effectively. And that's what made, was a huge difference between our success as well as other companies that started at the same time, maybe even had more capitalization, but were unable to even break the $20 million revenue mark where we were able to grow on, go on to over $80 million a year in sales. Okay, so, so that's LinkedIn. So using social media, so that's another. So now we have the phone, we've got email, and we have social media. So now we have three different channels that we can use to try to get our buyer's attention and to try to, uh, you know, capture their attention, engage them, and convert that into a conversation. All right, so that's the third channel. Now, number four is face-to-face. -face. Now, this is something that may seem a little unusual because I'm, I'm more of a digital guy, and I know that face-to-face -face is a little old school, but here... Perfect example. If your target market, if your niche, if you have a niche that's local to you, particularly within, you know, let's call it 20 or 30 miles, maybe 50 miles, what you might want to consider is taking a face-to-face -face approach. Now, I have a, a, an old student of mine who's a friend of mine now. His name's Franklin and Deckway. Some of you may have heard of him. I interviewed him here on Freight Broker Bootcamp Live uh, months ago. And he talked about his story of how he was able to do over 25, I think it was over $25,000 in profit his second month in business. And most of his clients today come from, from actual face-to-face -face going out and meeting with prospects face-to-face. -face. So what he does is he'll cold call prospects. So face-to-face, -face, the way that works is, you know, sometimes you can go to the front door, Sometimes you can go to the back door and just go to the shipping dock, but face-to-face -face can be very effective because a lot of service businesses have kind of abandoned that face-to-face -face approach. And so it can automatically be a differentiator. And a lot of times, if you're not able to get people on the phone, just hitting that, that uh, shipping dock on the, you know, in the back end of a business can do great things to start a dialogue with a shipping manager, particularly, you know, if you're unique, compelling, interesting, and you have some value to provide. Okay. So now we've got phone, email, social media like LinkedIn, as well as face-to-face. -face. Now, the last one that I'm going to share with you is probably something that's going to surprise you, but it's direct mail. And I don't mean direct mail in mass direct mail, like sending out postcards. That's not what I mean. I don't mean, you know, buying 10,000 postcards and just blasting them out to different manufacturers or people in your niche. That may or may not work, but it's going to be a very low conversion rate. What I mean is very specific and intentional and very personalized mail. So for example, a handwritten note. So what you might do if you have prospects that you haven't been able to get through on, to on the phone or email or any of these other channels, what you might want to do is consider sending them a handwritten note. Now, 
you can do a couple things. You can type that out, you can have it printed, and then you can sign it. It's not quite as personalized, and I don't like that as much as having a handwritten note. But if you're like me and you have horrible handwriting, okay, my handwriting is terrible. If you saw it, you know, it's literally atrocious. My, my 12-year-old daughter's handwriting is 10 times better than mine, probably because I can type 80 words a minute. So writing to me doesn't really matter. But ultimately, some sort of a handwritten note mailed to your prospect can be very cost effective as a way to break through the noise and to get their attention and to start a dialogue. Okay. So that's a perfect example. If you, but if you don't like the handwritten part because your handwriting is bad or you don't want to get into, you know, printing all this and then mailing it, there's a service that I want to share with you. It's really cool. It's a great service. It's called handwritten.com, but it's H A N D. W-R-Y-T-T-E-N. So what handwritten.com does is they actually will, uh, they have a system and a technology that will actually mimic actual handwriting versus typing and they will mail the actual notes out for you. So they'll send a personalized note out to a prospect. They do all the work for you. It's very cost effective. It includes the envelope, the the creating the, the the handwritten note as well as postage and everything. Again, it's a great service that a lot of companies, a lot of salespeople are using to try to break through the noise and to get the attention of their buyers. And so that's another channel that you could use is direct mail or at least what I would consider sending them a handwritten note. All right. So there we go. In quick summary, here's what we got. We always have the phone. It's a very effective way to get through the noise and to, you know, to connect and engage with our prospects. It's probably the number one way that you are going to see success. But don't forget about cold email, which is sending an email to your prospect. Don't forget about social media, which is LinkedIn and Twitter and other social platforms where they are spending time, if not on a daily, a weekly basis, where you may be able to get their attention. It worked very effectively for me. Also, don't forget about face-to-face. If they're local to your area, go visit them. Drop by their dock. Drop something off at the front desk. Try to get their attention through that, and you'd be surprised how effective that can be. And last but not least, send them a handwritten note, either something that you write out yourself, drop in the mail, and then send out to them, or use a service like handwritten.com. That's H-A-N-D-W-R-Y-T-T-E-N, okay? So that's a great service for you to use also. So those are the the four extra strategies beyond the phone that you can use to get more shippers with by making less phone calls. Because what you're going to do is you're going to take a multi-channel approach to connecting and engaging with your buyer. And I think what you're going to find is this multi-channel approach can literally double the amount of contacts and conversations that you have with your target market. And if you can double the number of conversations you can potentially double the number of opportunities and sales for your business. So that's the reason why I think a multi-channel approach is so powerful. That's what the top freight brokers and freight agents are using today is a multi-channel approach. They're not married to just one strategy. They've taken in a a multi-channel approach. For example, I teach this multi-channel approach in my freight broker sales accelerator program. So that's a program that I just launched a few months ago. It's going to be relaunching probably around the beginning of June. I teach this multi-channel approach in what I call a sales cadence, which is a very strategic strategic and optimized multi-channel approach that's designed to help you increase the number of conversations you're having and thus increasing the amount of sales. That's part of my Freight Broker Sales Accelerator program. If you guys want to be notified when I open up and relaunch the Freight Broker Sales Accelerator, all you have to do is this. Go to freightbrokerbootcamp.com forward slash FB sales, all one word, slash FB sales, or you can just send a text to 474747 with the word uh, in the text FB sales, all one word. Okay. So those are the two ways that you can get notified. That's going to put you on the waiting list. When I launch my new, this new freight broker sales accelerator program, it was super popular. We're working on it behind the scenes very diligently to get this thing relaunched. You know, we had like a 9.7 out of 10 rating with the first cohort that went through the course. So I'm super excited about that. That's just kind of a little, little add in here. 
if you're watching this about sales, you're obviously learning to uh, want to enhance your skills and your, your, your strategies around sales. So if you want to get notified of the next Freight Broker Sales Accelerator, just go to Freightbroker, FreightBrokerBootCamp.com forward slash FB sales, and you'll be able to get on the waiting list and get notified so that you can be first in line when I open up an enrollment for that next course. Okay. So that's my strategy, the multi-channel approach on how to get more shippers by making less phone calls. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure you, and you're new to the industry and you just want to get started, make sure you check out FreightBrokerBootCamp.com. You know, we offer a 60 day, 100% money back guarantee. You know, we've got, a, we've got a gold membership, which is an annual membership. We've got a lifetime membership, which is our platinum membership. So check it out. And again, we offer a 60 day, 100% money back guarantee. No questions asked. You'll get your money back if you're not happy for any reason. It does happen from time to time, but it's pretty rare. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Have an awesome day. I'm going to now uh, give away the prize. Okay. So I'm going to give away that prize. If you guys want to be included in the drawing for this, this, this prize, all you have to do is like the stream and then share. Just share the stream on LinkedIn or, or Facebook or Twitter or YouTube, wherever you can share it, okay? Share the stream. Most of you are probably going to share it on Facebook uh, and then come back in here and type shared and then I'm going to pick the winner and then I'm going to go into live Q&A, okay? So I'm going to give you guys a minute to share the stream and then we're going to go into live Q&A. So I'm going to grab a quick drink and then we're going to uh, give away this prize. I'll let you know what the prize is as I'm giving it away, okay? I will tell you this. It's not the shirt. It's not the shirt this week, okay? I've been giving away this shirt, Freightpreneur shirt, every week. Uh, and I'm actually running out of stock. I've got to reorder or figure out if I'm going to continue to give this thing away. Mm -hmm. But uh, I did give you a prize. The prize today is way more valuable than this shirt and had a huge, huge impact on me and helping me and was the foundation of helping me grow three multi-million dollar companies, okay? So if that doesn't get your curiosity, then I don't know what will. So make sure you share the stream and I'm gonna pick a winner in about 60 seconds. So you've got about one minute to do that as I grab a drink. And uh, listen, we got a lot of people live today. I'm excited, I appreciate you guys being here. I know your guys' time is valuable. I don't take this lightly. I know that this is the middle of the day and I know you guys have a lot of things going on. Um, but I've been doing, you know, I've, I've relaunched this Freight Broker Bootcamp Live over a year ago and I don't think I've missed any. I think I did miss one due to a huge technical issue, but I think I've done it for over a year straight every Monday. So we've talked about a lot of different topics. And a lot of times what I do is I will edit, we'll have those edited down a shorter version of it and I'll put them on my YouTube channel. So if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, you guys are crazy because I'm launching a new video training every week for free on my YouTube channel. Okay. So make sure you check it out on YouTube. Maybe you're already streaming on YouTube right now, but probably I think most of you are probably on Facebook. So, all right. So here we go. All right. So we've got a bunch of people that have shared it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll through the feed. I'm going to close my eyes. I'm going to land on somebody randomly. Okay. Because that's the only way I can do it. I'm going to land on somebody randomly and you're going to be the winner. Okay. So here we go. And again, you have to be in the U S in order to collect the prize just because of shipping costs. All right. So here we go. I'm going to scroll through and oops, there's no winner there. So I got to scroll through again. I'm sorry. Hold on a minute. Oh, I know what happened. All right, here we go. Ready? The winner is Val. Val is the winner. She said she shared it three times. Hashtag shared, hashtag shared, hashtag shared. Welcome. Congratulations, Val. You are the winner. And the you won a copy of my favorite book, which is the book that helped me launch my first business and to develop all of my sales skills, which is How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. I'm going to ship this book out to you, okay? So this is what the prize that you're going to get today. I have given away hundreds of these books in my career, hundreds, okay? The publisher must love me because I've bought and given away hundreds of these books in my career. This is the book that I've given away more, and I, and I attribute to the foundation of me learning how to sell and, 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 and develop relationships and to actually the foundation of building a successful business. So I hope you enjoy the book. Again, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Gail, Dale Carnegie. 
All you have to do, Val, is this. Go to my Facebook page for Freight Broker Bootcamp and then send me a message with your full name, your full mailing address, okay? And that's it. All I need is your full name and mailing address, okay? And um, if, you, if you include your cell phone number, I'll send you something cool. So just make sure you message me with your full name and mailing address, and I will make sure that we send out a copy of this book here this week. It'll get to you, you know, within the within a week or so. I truly appreciate you guys being here. I truly appreciate you participating. So let's dive into some Q and A. All right. So for those of you that have questions, let's jump into the Q and A. Okay. Congratulations, Val, and everybody else who's won over the last few months. I will most likely be giving away more t-shirts in the future, but today I decided to give away uh, that book. So I hope you guys enjoy it. All right, so let's jump into some Q&A. What do you guys got for me? If you've already typed your question in, it must have scrolled up. Type, Retype the question in below and let me know. Um, okay, so the book name, Corey, is How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie, Okay. It's one of the first personal development books I ever read, but it's not one of those woo-woo type books. This, this book is credited by many, 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 many entrepreneurs and salespeople as the number one book that they've ever read in their entire career, okay? So this is the reason why I give this book away because the concepts in here, if you, if you read and you absorb and then you apply these concepts, this, this, this is, is, it's a gold mine. Okay. So how to win friends and influence people. That's the book. All right. John asks, how did you get your first shipper? Smiling and dialing, baby. I picked up the phone. I was green as grass. I had no idea what I was doing. Uh, but what I lacked in experience I picked up for in enthusiasm and in hard work. And within the first, I think it was in the first week to 10 days, we got our first shipment. And our first month, I think we did, if I recall, I think we did 12 loads our first month in business. So we didn't do a lot, but we did 12 loads. It was probably, I think that was probably three different shippers the first month. So the first shipper that we ever got was just straight up cold calling. And so, you know, that it, good old cold calling works. It's not my favorite, but it definitely works. But since then, you know, my approach has become a lot more strategic. And later on, we adopted this multi-channel approach, which was a huge difference. Um, the things I talked about today by leveraging email and by leveraging social media and by leveraging face-to-face, -face, as well as handwritten notes and direct mail. Those are all strategies that we use to help grow the business. And when you do them, in a strategic format um, where you're using a sales cadence and you're, you've really got a real strategy behind it rather than just a bunch of random outreaches, it can be very, very effective. Okay. So I hope you, uh, good question. Thanks for asking. All right. So is it best to have the word freight or logistics in your company name? Okay, so this is a very subjective question. Personally, okay, um, having the word logistics or freight or transportation in your company name can be beneficial in my opinion because it tells people what you do in the name of your company, right? So it's very descriptive, all right? So, but it's not always 100% necessary. Look at companies like Yahoo and Google and Zoom and even in the industry itself, C.H. Robinson and, uh, you know, TQL was originally known as Total Quality Logistics, but they kind of shortened it down to TQL because Total Quality Logistics was long. <laughs> um, but so, you know, it's very subjective. I think that having some descriptor of what you do in your company name can definitely be beneficial, but it's not a hard and fast rule. So if you have a name that you want to leverage that doesn't have that in there, so be it. Um, I think what you're just going to find is that when you reach out to somebody and you tell them your company name, it's going to be, there's, it's going to be a little less likely that they're going to know what you do. 
right? Because if you just use the word Zoom or Yahoo or Google, before the brands existed, nobody knew what that was, right? Just like uh, Pepsi and all the other brand names that are out there. So um, I prefer having some sort of freight transportation or logistics component to the business name, but it's not a must. Good question though. I've never had that question. Okay, Courtney, I hate to break, I hate to burst your bubble, but there is no perfect script. There is no perfect words. There is no perfect cold email or perfect cold outreach strategy. What you have to understand is that it varies. So the important part of this is when doing cold outreach, you have to get their attention, right? This is the hardest part of the sales process. The sales process goes like this, attention, interest, desire, and action, okay? Which is where they take action and give you an order and they become a client. But getting their attention is the hardest part. And I know that's the reason why you're asking the question. My strategy is typically pretty simple. I like to be very brief, but I like to develop what I call a value statement or a sales hook, okay? And those sales hooks are typically specifically designed around pain points that my prospect has. So let's give you an example of some pain points for shippers. Common pain points for shippers are late pickups and late deliveries, right? Freight claims, uh, you know, not being able to find trucks uh, because of tight capacity, increased rates because of fuel or tight capacity. So those are examples of of pain points that every shipping manager, logistics manager, transportation manager has experienced during their career. And sometimes all of those on a weekly basis, okay? So I like to gauge and I, I like to develop my sales hooks around those pain points, okay? So I think that will help guide you a little bit. But I wanna be honest with you, there is no perfect script. There is no perfect template. There is no perfect email outreach, okay? But if you use those fundamentals that I just shared with you around creating a sales hook that's compelling and relevant to your target market, you're going to be shocked. Matter of fact, I have an entire training on this in my freight broker sales accelerator program that I'm going to be relaunching late May, early June. So again, if you guys want to be a part, if you want to get on the wait list for that freight broker sales accelerator relaunch, all you got to do is go to freightbrokerbootcamp.com forward slash FB sales. That's it. Or you can send a text to 474747 and just send the word FB sales, all one word, and you'll get added to that uh, uh, wait list when I do release the next freight broker sales accelerator. But I dive very deep into creating, understanding those pain points, creating your value statements, creating your sales hooks. It's a big part of the training that we go into. So it's a good question. And I hope that gives you a little bit of a framework here in this very short format that we're talking about today. Thanks, Courtney. Okay, so JT asks, is the carrier responsible for late and rescheduling fee? You know, that's an interesting question. Um, I think that if the carrier is at fault for being late and there is some sort of a rescheduling fee, then chances are you're probably going to pass that cost along to them. But it's going to have to be something that would be negotiated, right? You may or may not be able to collect that fee. So that may be something that you want to put in your broker carrier agreement that if the shipper charges you a fee for reschedule due to a late delivery or pickup, that they're going to have to consume that fee or split that fee or whatever the case may be. So that's probably a good idea if you run into that a lot um, to, to have the, uh, to add it to your broker carrier agreement or to your rate confirmation maybe. So that would be a couple things you could do to try to, had that off at the pass. But again, I, I didn't run into that very often. We had, I, I don't recall, I don't recall very many shippers that charged a fee for rescheduling. Now I know some grocery warehouse companies that do high volume, try to do that stuff. Um, I didn't do a lot of business with those guys, so I'm not quite sure, but I don't think you're going to run into that very often. But if you do, that's, that's how you would handle it. Good question. Thanks TJ or JT.
Okay, so I get this question all the time. Is it an advantage? To be, is it an advantage advantageous to become a dispatcher before a freight broker? In my opinion, no. Here's why: because a dispatcher is not a freight broker. Dispatchers and freight brokers are totally different. Okay, a dispatcher only does one half of the job of a freight broker. And from my research, and many people agree with me on this, as well as many people disagree, independent dispatchers. Um, that do not have a freight broker authority are illegally brokering freight without a license. Okay. So there's a big question in the industry is independent dispatching legal? Because by the definition of the FMCSA, a broker is anyone that accepts compensation for arranging the transport of freight between a carrier and a shipper. Okay. So that's an independent, what an independent dispatcher does, it's a, the exact same thing that a freight broker does. But a freight broker can't do it without a freight broker authority and a license. So there's a lot of debate out there. I do not promote independent dispatching. If that's what you do, that's fine. I'm not, I'm not trying to take food out of, off your table or money out of your pocket. I'm just giving you my opinion and my perspective. I've done, I did a, an entire training on this, the difference between an independent dispatcher and a freight broker and a freight agent. You can find that on YouTube. Um, but for me, I think that starting as a freight, I think starting as a freight broker, if you don't want to start as a freight broker, then you should start as a freight agent. Okay. And a freight agent is someone who doesn't have to have their license, doesn't have to have their authority, doesn't have to have a freight broker bond, doesn't have to have a bunch of insurance, doesn't have to have any of that. They work under a freight broker as an independent agent. And those agents are paid on a straight commission basis, typically ranging from 50 to 70%. So my suggestion is if you're not ready to become a freight broker, start as a freight agent. And if you are ready, just jump in and get your freight broker authority and go from there. Okay, Nico, how do we trust that your boot camp is any different than any other programs? Well, number one, there's no other freight broker training and trainer in the world that's done over $200 million as a freight broker. I'm the only one. I've done the research. It's glaringly obvious. I've done over $200 million as a freight broker. So my experience and my background lends a little more credibility and a little more substance because I've, I've actually done it. Most freight broker trainers out there have either never built a successful freight brokerage or have a very small freight brokerage of a half a million or a million or $2 million, which is fine, but they've never scaled up a large scale freight brokerage. Okay. So that's number one. Number two, I put my money where my mouth is. I offer you a 60 day, 100% money back guarantee. No questions asked. If you don't like the training in the free, you have 60 days to test it. If you don't like it, we'll give you your money back. So I can't make it any easier. I can't make it any, you know, less risk for you. Um, or for anybody. Again, we've trained well over 8,000 students in the last decade. We've been around for over a decade. Um, and there's probably students in here right now in this live that would vouch for the training. And I'm sure that some of them will probably speak up in the comments. So I'll let them speak for me. But I understand your concern, Nico, if you're brand new and you just haven't, you, we've never met before, or this is maybe your first live. Do a little research. I think you'll be, you'll, uh, I'll more than pass the test. Tawana, I need, uh, ask, I need a training for a group of agents. Do you offer any material for groups? Okay. So I do not offer a uh, group programs for my freight broker bootcamp startup training, but I am going to offer a um, bulk purchase option for companies on my freight broker sales accelerator. So if you have five or 10, I don't know where the price break is going to be, but I'm going to offer some volume discounts on, on group pricing for the freight broker sales accelerator. Cause I have a lot of brokers who have five or 10 or 15 or 20 or even 50 salespeople that want to want them to take the freight broker sales accelerator. So I'm going to offer some incentive and discounts based on volume purchases there. So you're going to have to, if that's something that you're interested in, make sure you uh, are a part of the waiting list for the freight broker sales accelerator. Again, it's freightbrokerbootcamp.com forward slash FB sales, and you'll get all the details on that.
So Sherry has a question. What type of people do I befriend on LinkedIn? Well, you, you befriend the type of people that can potentially be your clients and you befriend people that could also be your carriers. So those are the two primary groups that you're going to focus. The third one would be people that you might want to hire, whether they be salespeople, whether they be agents, whether they be operations people. So those are the three groups, people that you might want to work for you, shippers that you would want to do business with and carriers that could potentially, you could potentially collaborate and work with. So those are the three. Now, if you're talking about getting new clients and shippers, the people that you're going to go after are people like shipping managers, logistics managers, transportation managers, warehouse managers. Uh, you know, those are probably the four big ones. I'm sure there's a whole bunch of little nuances and different titles out there, but I'd say those are four that would um, you would do very well with in connecting, engaging, and then hopefully converting those into an offline conversation. All right, so I'm scrolling. Okay, so Tiffany asks, do you think it's wise to buy a load board and a TMS system as a broker? Yes, I do. As a broker, you are going to need both of those things. You are going to need a load board. My two favorite are the DAT, the DAT, and truckstop.com. So those are my two favorite load boards. There are lots of other ones out there, and you can pick those if you want, but those are my two favorite. As far as a TMS, you do not need a TMS day one moving your first couple loads. Some people choose to get it because they're ready to ramp up. You don't absolutely need it. You could run those loads on paper very effectively because it's very low volume, but you are going to need a TMS if you're going to offer a high level of service and you are going to ramp up your operations and sales. Okay. So you, any successful freight broker is going to need both of those tools, both load boards as well as a TMS, which is also known as a transportation management software, transportation management system. Okay. So yes, you will need both of those if you're going to be successful in this business. All right. So here's a question. Uh, I have about 10,000 leads for shippers. What would be your approach to this? Should I keep it niche specific? Okay. Well, first of all, a lead is a little different, you know, it depends on what you define as a lead. All right. So if you're just talking about, you have the phone, you have the name and contact information for a potential shipper, that's one thing. Okay. Um, and I think that's what you're saying. All right. So if you have that list of 10,000, I would not just go blitz that entire list because any of you that know me know that I'm a big believer in riches are in niches. So what you need to do is you need to niche down that list and you need to identify the niche that you want to entertain. So maybe you're going to test this in four or five different niches, right? And maybe you're brand new and you want to kind of test four or five niches. My suggestion would be to identify those niches. Let's say one of those niches is produce, just a hypothetical. So you're going to create your, your list. You're going to create your, your script and your outreach you know, approach for people that are specifically in the produce industry. And then maybe there's a different niche also that's the steel niche. Now, your conversations and the dialogue and the things you talk about with someone in the steel industry are not always going to directly translate to the produce industry. So you have to be very niche specific. I believe that you being very niche will make you more relevant to your prospect and will increase the likelihood that they're going to do business with you. So good question. Uh, I'm glad you got a nice, you know, list of people to start with, but I would definitely niche it down, customize the approach based upon that specific niche. And I think you're going to find a lot more success. So Nico, I had a conversation, I, I did an entire training about this and the training was, do truck drivers make good freight brokers and freight agents? And the answer was yes. And I'm going to give you a couple of reasons why, but you can go to YouTube and you can go to my channel, youtube.com forward slash freight brokers, or just search for freight broker bootcamp. You'll find my channel and you'll find a video in there where I talk about this exact topic. But a couple of the reasons why truck drivers can make good freight brokers is this. Number one, they understand the lingo, meaning they, they know 
you know, all of the lingo, whether it be line haul or fuel or accessorials or dealing with people on the dock, right? Those sorts of things. They understand the types of equipment. They understand all those things, right? So that's a big advantage because most new freight brokers don't understand that. They have to learn that. Number two, another one is, you know, as a truck driver, you make a lot of contacts. You're talking to a lot of people that are in the industry. You're talking to shippers that are on the dock, shipping managers, dock workers, warehouse managers, people that control freight. So you already have the beginnings of those relationships. So you you should already be well connected and be able to reach out to those people. So those are just a couple of reasons, but I would highly recommend that if you're, you as a truck driver, anybody on here is a truck driver and you're curious of would you make a good freight broker or freight agent as a truck driver? The answer is yes. Check out my YouTube video. I did an entire training on this and I think you'll be excited because I go into a lot more depth and I share a lot more information. But uh, good question. Thanks for asking, Nico. Uh Shamika asks, for newbies, what's the best niche to start with? There is no best niche, but I would tell you as a total newbie to the industry, there's a cup, there's at least one niche that I would avoid when you're first getting started. And that would be heavy haul or, you know, heavy haul or overdimensional freight. There's a lot of complexity there. Uh, it, it's very nuanced. It takes a good amount of time to really understand that niche it's probably one of the most complex. Uh, it, it can be highly profitable, but for a new new person or a layman or someone that's brand new to the industry, it can be a little overwhelming and can be challenging. So I might avoid that as a as a brand new person. Um, you know, anything that that is overdimensional or um, or you know uh, whatever that sort of stuff. You know, special, very specialized, overdimensional stuff, right? Um, so that would be stuff that I would avoid. The other stuff, whether it be the steel industry or the produce industry or specific to flatbeds or vans or refrigerated, or maybe you're focusing on bottled beverages or whatever, I wouldn't necessarily avoid any of those. Those are going to be something that's going to be specific to maybe maybe your how your background would translate. For example, if you're from the produce industry, maybe you're going to focus on produce. If you came from the steel industry or you used to work in the steel industry, maybe you're going to focus on that because you already know the lingo and you've already got contacts there. You know, if you worked in a manufacturing company that makes, uh, you know, that does bottled water and bottled beverages, you know, you understand that lingo. So sometimes it's your background, but typically the niches are defined by industry uh, or product type, uh, equipment type, geography right? Where you have specific geography or a hybrid of all of those, right? So that would typically be how you would choose your niche. Oops, sorry. I'm scrolling here. Let me just see if I got any last questions. So Aaron Melly asked this question, when I subscribed to your program, they wanted to charge me a thousand dollars to teach me how to look for shippers. No, that's not true. So every freight broker, I have a, every freight broker bootcamp member, new member of freight broker bootcamp, which is my introductory startup program for people that are new to the industry. Okay. When you purchase that program, you get an opportunity to enroll in what I call my no cold calling system for freight brokers which is a system that I use LinkedIn and social selling to teach you how to get clients without cold calling. Okay. So this is a, a very advanced training. I make a very special offer where you can get it at like a 50% discount or something from what it normally sells for. And I make you that offer as just, just a generous offer as a discount. If you think that you want to focus on that no cold call strategy where I use LinkedIn and social selling. Now, within the course itself, it teaches you how to do outreach and cold call and, and find your niche and, and build a list. Even, we even give you a list of manufacturers uh, and shippers that you can pull from. So you don't need that cold call training to go out and start your business, but it could be a big advantage for you if you choose to do that because a lot of people don't like to do cold call. 
Matter of fact, today we talked about a multi-channel approach. We talked about the phone. We talked about cold email. We talked about leveraging LinkedIn, which was one of my favorites. We talked about face-to-face -face, and we also talked about handwritten notes and direct mail, okay? So this is an example of another channel that you can leverage. I've developed an entire system called my no cold calling uh, for freight brokers system, which leverages LinkedIn and social selling to, to get clients outside of just the traditional cold calling format where most people start. So no, you don't have to purchase that and it's not required in order for you to start your business or start getting clients. It's just an, an additional uh, training that I offer at a big discount for new members, okay? William asked, what type of insurance does a freight broker need? Believe it or not, a freight broker by law does not need any insurance at all. I know that might surprise you, but he doesn't need any insurance at all. You need a freight broker authority, which requires you have a freight broker surety bond, okay? That's what you absolutely have to have. Now, there are optional insurances that you may choose to get, like general liability, which is general business liability, right? Typically coverage on that might be like a million dollar general liability policy, but it's not required, okay, um, to be a freight broker. Secondly, you might get something like contingent cargo insurance. That's also an optional service. You, freight brokers are not required to have that because most shippers do not require them to have that because what happens is the cargo coverage on any shipment is covered primarily by the carrier's cargo insurance. That's part of what a freight broker does is they vet the carrier to make sure that they have a proper carrier authority, make sure they have the proper insurance coverage. Those are the two big things you're gonna check as a, as a broker. And if there's any freight claims, it's gonna go to that coverage, okay? So contingent cargo is also an optional service. You know, there are other things like E&O insurance, like errors and emissions insurance. There are other things like uh, receivables insurance. That's another option where you can insure the receivables or your invoices to your shipper, which is, you know, a, a much more sophisticated and complex type of insurance. None of those are required my suggestion to you is you probably would want to get a general liability policy, but you absolutely do not need any of the others. And I would not get a contingent cargo policy until or if you ever need it. And I would get that based upon a shipper that says they want to do business with you. I would get the first policy in place if a shipper says they want to do business with you. And if you can provide that insurance, they will do business with you because now the cost of that insurance is going to be subsidized by the business you're going to do with that new client. Okay. So I don't recommend that uh, freight brokers get contingent cargo off the, off the bat, nor do I recommend any of those other insurance uh, products. I'm just scrolling here through the questions. I'm going to do one more question. I'm going to wrap it up for today. All right. So here's a question from Done Deal. Do you use a factoring company to get your money from shippers? I personally never used a factoring company because we had bank financing and capital in place when we started the business. But I would tell you that nine out of 10 freight broker startups use factoring as a way to cash flow their businesses. Because what it allows them to do is it allows them to get their money within typically 24 to 48 hours. They're able to get up 90 to 95% of the invoice paid to them, which allows them to pay the carriers and maybe some operational expenses. And then the factoring company waits for the shipper to pay after 30 or 45 or 60 days and then the factoring company gives them the difference minus their fees, okay? So nine out of 10 uh, startup freight brokers use factoring as a way to start cash flowing their business. It's a great way. It's what I call OPM, which is other people's money, right? So there is a cost to that. And eventually you would, if you're going to grow that business, you're probably going to want to break away from factoring once you have the ability to get some bank financing because it's a lot cheaper, uh, factoring typically costs two, three, four, maybe up to 5%, depending upon the arrangement you have with the factoring company. So it can get expensive, whereas traditional bank financing for a business financing, it's not unusual, particularly these days to get a four or five or 6% loan per annum, which is a lot cheaper. So you can start out with factoring, but ultimately you will probably want to migrate over to more traditional financing, bank financing, 
um, based upon the value of your receivables. So yeah, I think starting as a factoring company, starting with a factoring company as a freight broker startup is definitely very common and a smart way to cash flow the business. All right, guys. So that's going to wrap it up for today. Um, I appreciate you being here. I hope you guys enjoyed the training. If you did, make sure you like the stream, make sure you share the stream and make sure you're back every Monday at noon. I totally appreciate you being here. Um, if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, make sure you're subscribed. You, you're an absolute fool. If you don't get subscribed to that, you will get notified. Make sure you hit the little bell so you get notified every time I release a new video. I release new trainings, free trainings every week. If you're curious about becoming a freight broker, a freight agent, and you're just getting started here, go to freightbrokerbootcamp.com. We have the most cost-effective and comprehensive online freight broker training program, trained over 8,000 students. And we offer, again, a 60-day, 100% no risk, ironclad guarantee. Check it out at freightbrokerbootcamp.com. Appreciate you guys being here. Have an awesome day. Have an awesome week. And we'll talk soon.